soul family welcome to the matrix oracle this is what you need to hear right now from the akash from the akashic records something that needs to be brought up to the surface at this time this is a timeless reading so let's pick those piles we're gonna pick three cards all right so pile number one two and three Woo! <laughs> okay all right different orders than expected but we like that okay let's see what we have here so pile number one the queen of forces Ooh, what an energy pile number two the one of keys the architect beautiful maybe something from egypt there and number three the two of keys the treasure wow all right one two three let's pull the cards that we're going to use with this so pile number one two three Okay. Not this one yet. This one. Mm. This one has two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and a little bit more. <laughs> and there we go. All right, you guys. Are you ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Pile number one. Let's see what you need to hear right now. In terms of messages from the Akashic Records, with the Queen of Forces, there's here a message of balance, of maintaining power through duality. There might be something also around cycles or around eclipse or equinox solstice season okay this is timeless so it's going to be according to when you watch this and it reaches you there's a message here about some power that you may be harnessing receiving starting to channel at this time all right let's see what else we have the comet our life path, wow. Makes me think of a, a blueprint here, you know, like the print of the thumb. Life path of the heart. Your life path is to put your heart into everything that you do. You are happy when you can express your feelings and your dreams. The things that you do the best are the things that you can put your heart and imagination into. Always let others know how you are feeling. If you hide your emotions, life will be very difficult. Also, you may enjoy writing because it is a good way for you to bring out your imagination. Those with the heart path tend to be emotional people. Being an emotionally driven person is not a problem, but people on this path worry that if they express their love and feelings for others, they will be rejected. This is rarely how others react. So have the courage to show your feelings and express your love without fear. It takes strength to be loving and honest. So be strong. What an interesting combination we have here as a message from the Akash. 
I feel this is about emotional mastery. There's maybe some of you that have had to walk a path of contrast, maybe where your emotions were um, being judged or you were criticized for being too uh, emotional or compassionate. Maybe some of you, there was too much naivete about it. Um, so being taken advantage of. But there's here something that you need to hear about this power, about your emotional intelligence and how it's part of your purpose. All right. I don't know why, but this card feels like I need to hear this. Difficult times. Be on the guard against chaos as unforeseen perils or emotional upheaval are foretold. Okay. So some of you, I do feel that this is something from the Akash where if you've experienced this type of you know, labeling or judging regarding your emotional states, your emotions being too much, uh, being moody, uh, being too sensitive, hypersensitive, okay? Um, I feel what's coming from the Akash is that if you're watching this, there might be still a fear that you need to surrender regarding past lifetimes um, where you, you were maybe, um, I'm hearing judged, or I, I think there might have been some, uh, some of you maybe being put on trial or your heart was very trying um, because of your empathy, okay? But this is, you're hearing this now because this is part of your blueprint. This is part of a gift that is meant for you to harness. Right away, I feel my super empath playlist. By the way, some of you are new to the channel. You've never you know, watched a reading this. I do compose frequencies to help with those readings, to help with the astrology, the cosmic transit, or just to pick a card readings. When you're feeling this, if you're struggling right now um, with some of the fears um, and also becoming a super empath, I do have a super empath playlist. And in my pharmacy, vibrational pharmacy, I do have anxiety, anger uh, right now that can help if you have any of those feelings towards an experience from the path because past from the path, from the path that you walked. There is just so much that is awaiting for you. I can feel it no matter how dark um, this could have been. Really, I can sense this. Let me just focus more on that here for you. We have no place like home. Came in the reverse, so we'll see how that plays out. A change in the wind. And bear with me, I don't know why I'm putting them in this order, but we'll see why I'm guided to do that. The tribe. And here, movement awakens my creative spirit. Okay, I love, 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 love what I'm feeling for you. You see all there. So there's, there's an invitation for you to hear this message, my dear one, from the Akash, that you probably walked a path that was hard. Some of you, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm feeling in the chart, you could have some Pluto retrograde because of the tribe and the life path. So some of you um, being ostracized, Part of past experiences, Pluto retrograde would be a strong indicator. Okay, um, but it be, it's it's I really sense that when you're watching this, it's because you're on the brinks of shifting, shifting this, being able to harness and hold the wisdom of all the path, all the whether dark or light, but especially in the dark times, 
holding that wisdom and still being in your heart and still being in a state of vibrational frequency that allows, you see how she almost shields herself. This queen is, is very much in control of the elements in this energy. She's in control of being serene while knowing that, especially even in nature, there's always this potential to shift from a storm to sun, sunlight, you know, just like a lot of things that can come that are unpredictable. That's what I feel, especially with the change in the wind. You've had, you've had to walk this path to be able to hold, harness a specific frequency that can help yourself and others be still in and through the wind of change. This potential is inside of your DNA. This is not something you have to work for. This is something that was given. I got chills just saying this, you guys, so deeply. And some of you, you had to wait, maybe uh, I'm seeing it here, the giraffe, um, kissing the little baby giraffe on the third eye. Uh, you had to maybe wait for a certain time in your life to awaken to the illusion of this matrix to be on your path, okay? So maybe some of you, you had a lot of difficult times and still had an open heart or still were trying to figure out and trying to almost adapt to others, adapt to the change, but really you were meant to let the change go through you and still be in your heart and learn how to respond or how to let go. It's just, there's just, it's almost like here, that's what I'm seeing. It's like you're learning how to, I know, okay, I'm going to say it, harness the power of Mother Earth. Just like we're seeing like the earth and we're watching the weather and we're seeing how many changes and, and earthquakes and, and things that happen. I'm just talking about the nature of the planet. And it's almost like here I can sense it. It's like you're strongly connected to the vibration of this earth. Some of you, maybe you have 11th house placement, okay? Or maybe, you know, people that... Uh, your connection to the collective is very strongly felt to Neptune. If you have Neptune in 11th house, if you have it in certain major points, so on your rising, descending, on your Imun Koeli IC, or your Midheaven MC, that can make the collective very felt into your field, okay? So those are astrology little guidance. Some of you know that that's something I love. And I do. So I'm feeling that you're learning, and that's what the Akash wants you to hear right now, is that this lifetime, you hearing this message, you're going to come into a place of power. You're going to transcend those difficulties, not through action so much, but through maybe surrendering or letting go of having to do or act because you hold a sacred blueprint on how to be sacredly connected to Gaia, connected to this, this humanity, this solar system, you know, in ways that are, that do not have words. And it's all an inner beingness. Okay, so I'm feeling that some of you honoring your movements, your body movements is very important. So if you're feeling that you need to expel some of the stress, or one thing that I feel that I want to share with you, this is something I do as someone that used to be a personal trainer, um, you know, specialize in corrective exercise, you know, medicinal type of training. Um, 
I remember that I had working, you know, a strong sense of how to work the energies through my personal practice and rituals of working out. Uh, when I wanted to shed energy, release energy, cardio was really good. I could just exert a lot of the, you know, shed the sweat. When I was anchoring a knowledge, a power, um, something that I wanted to ground and materialize, you know. So, for example, if I wanted to feel powerful after, you know, uh, difficulty, I would do strength training. I would challenge myself and just many other details like this. But some of you connecting how your body needs to move. Some of you it could be more flexibility because there's a resistance. So maybe yin yoga or just stretching, um, even just doing some hot sauna. So there's a, there's a message for you here, pile number one with the queen of forces that it's almost like your embodiment is your secret. Now I'm like looking at this from, from the top down where I'm seeing like you already have everything you need. It's within you. Again, we said that before. There's nothing for you to do. And as you harness your blueprint, you honor the movement that it invites you to create through the cycles of life. You're going to see more and more your point of attraction to soul family. So I'm seeing like how the Akash here are almost showing how, you know, past records, you know, of your experience that you may have been feeling out of place with a tribe or having gone through many chaos, I would say here for some reason, okay, uh, maybe I'm feeling the floods, Atlantean floods, Lemuria floods, but even just being part of, you know, um, earth disaster. I'm sorry, I don't have the word. <laughs> it's not my first language, but climate disaster or some type of thing that could have you lost your home. Um, but there's an experience like this that could have been embedded in your cells that you're being called to release. Okay, so I have the prescription for you and definitely here. Um, working with surrendering is the portal is going to work really well. Working if you have very, you know, anxiety or anger towards things, work with the pharmacy. Some of you, if it's deeply embedded, you have the quantum fascia healing, okay, that can remove some of the addiction. Maybe some of you, there's addictive patterns of worrying, of hyper awareness and vigilance. So go and check out that. And if you want to become really good at uh, being a super empath, that's a, an album in itself. If you have questions on how to work with those frequencies, I would be so happy to direct you and just, um, you know, converse about this. This is my work of heart, not art, but it's really from my heart that I'm doing this um, because I can be there with you, supporting you with all that I know from sound engineering and how it helps the sound, you know, align your body to certain messages. Okay, let's see in terms of tarot, because I felt called also to have those cards, and I think this is more regarding your kundalini, because this is um, the uh, sensual magic tarot. Let's see what we have. I want to put them in the order. Okay, the two of cups. The hanged man and the ace of wands. Oh, you know what? I just, I love this. So what I'm seeing in terms of your energy, because I was called to use this for working with Kundalini, for working with breath work. This is definitely calling to be in alignment between your feminine and your masculine, your mind and your heart. In that place of heart and mind, you might right now need to be more in stillness, okay? There's a lot of things that, in through this reading, 
we're calling more into stillness, in observation, in harnessing versus doing, doing. It, the only thing that we saw that was called to do was to move in terms of your body. It's almost like, and this is where the activation, I feel as some of you, that's something that I felt, you guys. Um, when I was working out and I had my spiritual uh, awakening and a spontaneous kundalini awakening, I really felt that what allowed the spontaneous awakening of my kundalini was that I was finally aligned in my flow, in my chi, in so many channels that it just sparked a combustion. And I feel that some of you, that could be what is going on. So if that's something that speaks to you, I do have a playlist, yin and yang playlist. You can work with one, the other, with both. I know there's a lot of suggestions here as far as the frequencies, so you're going to want to really pinpoint what is of the matter for you right now. But I'm loving this energy, this message for you, pile number one. This is about harnessing your power, your connection to source and your connection to earth. The collective needs you, the collective needs you to harness this special ability that is yours, that was gifted to you. You know, and um, you're going to feel more at home, at ease, even through the times of change and turbulence, because you're going to have already from your Akashic records, from your past lifetimes experiences, and from this lifetime, just so much knowledge about being in stillness and in power when um, through changes and evolution okay so that's what I have for you if you have any questions about how to direct your energy and work with this energy please feel free to email me you have all the details down below if you need personal guidance same thing look below I'm sending you many blessings much love and light and like those videos to support the channel to grow namaste number two let's see what you need to hear right now from the Akashic Records you have the one of keys with the architect. So that's what you chose. And there's an energy here that's very strong, uh, grounded. There's something about power. There's something about building, project. There's something obviously about your connection to maybe Egypt. being able to build something. I would say, and that's again a parenthesis, some of you know, and if you don't know me, uh, I do astrology, so I love uh, bringing those little uh, keynotes that I see from the cards into uh, the play. If some of you don't know or you've never heard of it, I mean, some of you may have heard of astrocartography. This is something you can find in any astrology uh, website. It is going to show you where, for example, Egypt, I would say maybe Alexandria, because Alexandria, the story of how Alexander the Great built Alexandria is quite a powerful one. Um, you can look at the map and see the influence of what planet uh, goes through Egypt. That's not going to resonate for everyone. If you have any questions about this, you please um, feel free to email me. I love astrocartography. So you would, some of you would have maybe a line that, that goes straight there or may be around there. So that would confirm and reiter, like make this message even more important. Okay. So you have the pragmatist. See, this energy field and the earth hand feels very grounded. There's some, I feel that the Akash here want to, wants to give you a hand. Wants to give you a hand, but it's a hand um, that maybe you just have forgotten. Like a power, power of design. Or maybe becoming, you know, someone that lives your life by design. That's what I'm hearing. Um, wants to give you back. Th this type of awareness. There's an activation that I feel strongly for you. I felt activation from, uh, you know, 
even pile number one. And I think that connecting to the Akash is meant to activate, is meant to like connect something from the past that would spark a remembrance. It says here, the elemental domain with the pragmatic and earth hand, pragmatist. The shape of the hand is essential to note because it is a physical representation of our most basic character traits and approach to life. Earth hands have square palms and somewhat short-looking fingers. These people are drawn to establishing <laughs> firm foundations, often seeking security, stability, and a steady income. They are realist and like concrete results. So down to earth, seeking structure and routine, resistant to change, okay, organized, methodical, and practical, okay. So this is interesting because some of you, I feel that, especially when I mention everything about hand, uh, some of you, if you've been wondering about your income, your finances, I feel that there are some messages here um, about some potential for you. Let's see what the other cards have. Declutter. Declutter your life. Let go of correspondence, objects, and people you no longer want. Someone will hurt your feelings and reveal a new side of themselves that you may wish to avoid. Okay, so here, as you're seeing this, there was a message of resistance to change. And maybe... You know, with a giving hand and feeling like the Akash wants you to hear this message now that has to do with your foundation, your income, your, you know, steadfastness in grounding probably some of your very deep desires. I'm hearing deeply rooted desires and some of you it could be stability. It could be also romance or partnership. It doesn't have to be, but I needed to mention it, um, especially with the couple here. I feel that there is something that may be from the past, and we're going to obviously look at the other cards, something from the past that maybe you've been holding on to that is showing up in this lifetime too and that we need to figure out together. Wow. Serendipity. Hmm. Higher power. And I am courageous, steady, and strong. Okay. I literally felt like I needed to breathe. Pile number two, I don't know if you've been caught in the hustle bustle or the rat race of the nine to five uh, watching this but it feels like you need some space and time to receive this power and i feel that especially with the pragmatic maybe some of you have been so hyper focused on material expression of safety um and not that there's need to be judgment about it because obviously we need uh, that to be part of our life to feel safe. Um, but I feel that in this routine, because there was messages about routine, there's not enough space for your spiritual self to come through. And it's, it's saying that it's coming through. But it's like, in, the, in which way do you want it to come through? Do you want it to come through um uh, chaos or so things breaking down or you want them to just come through with ease i feel like the resistance to change could be um something that could be part of um uh, something you're working through your chart so some of you again i'm going back to the chart because some of you uh are into astrology as well I feel fourth house energy, definitely. And I feel maybe influence from the first house. If you have first house influence, there's something you inherited, okay? Um, 
In the fourth house energy, there's a lot about real estate that I, that can come through. Um, you could have some of you a north node, south node, fourth to tenth. Okay. And for some of you, I just feel for some reason, and I do not know why. Mm, there's something about a Mars in the 12th house. Okay. I'm mentioning this doesn't have to resonate with everyone. Let's work through this. What I'm seeing here is that your attachment to certain, almost like a status quo, okay, could be what is actually disallowing for this ease to come. You know, it's almost like <laughs> just trying too hard. There's just messages here and energies for you, pile number two, around working way, way too hard. I need to add some cards here before I use the tarot. Ha. Look at this, the fate. And so some of you, I, I really feel, I don't know if you've gone through a spiritual awakening yet or what happened if when you went through a spiritual awakening, but this definitely what I want to uh, illustrate this with. It's almost like being so hyper-focused on the 3D reality that then we're losing track of our spiritual connection and then there's a falling apart. And been there, done that. I know this energy. That's why when I felt it, I was like, whoa, yeah, I remember this. There was almost like you're going off your compass so much that um, life just has to intervene. It could be some divine intervention for some of you. But I want you to know that it's saying that it is because there's a lot more of abundance in a different shape and form, but it also is going to manifest in money and stability. But the stability comes from your courage, your courage to face the unknown, your courage to follow what is true to your heart. Maybe some of you with this energy, I feel that there could have been um, even eighth house energy or even a south node in eighth house where there could be attachment to uh, the material of the family or things that you inherited um, or being depending on other people for your income or a relationship. And it might not be what you're experiencing here, but there might be some fear. So for example, if you're married and um, it's fizzling out and you know it, both of you know it, but yet you're staying together because of the finances, of the complications, just to separate. And again, I'm not inviting anyone to take any decisions on what I'm saying, but I'm saying it's more like an, an illustration of settling. Okay. It's almost like settling instead of like you wanted to settle down, but it's like, it's, 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 it's keeping you from your fate. And there's something so great that is meant for you. Pile number two. And this is why you need to hear this now because Maybe the foundation that you need to build right now is an intricate relationship within yourself, with your intuition, with your heart, with the higher power, with the source, and knowing that you are connected to the stars, you're connected to the cosmos. So your, your soul is just inevitably called to your purpose. Now, how much resistance... We create, it's almost like a rubber band, like how far are you going to stretch it? And then it's like, it, it can hurt a lot. I'm sure some of you can relate to this. Um, so that's what I'm seeing for you so far. Let's get some tarot cards that are working more with uh, your Kundalini energy. This is essential magic tarot. All right, let's see. What do we need to hear? Okay. Those two cards and this one. All right. Boop. 
we have the five of wands. I don't know why, but I felt this so much. The five of wands. In this deck, someone observing something that could be desirable, pleasurable, and yet has not access to it. You know, it's almost like the universe wants to provide. If by number two, if you've been wanting to manifest something, it's, it's in your reach. But I'm seeing here, there might be some work around mirror exercise. I don't know if some of you know about the mirror exercise. It's like when you're saying, you know, this person it frustrates me because this, 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 this. Realize that you can replace this and say, I get frustrated when this, this, this. Okay, so kind of like taking away the influence of others and, and dealing with the energy and maybe realizing that certain things that you're doing may be giving you the effect of that interaction or whatever, okay? Yeah, there's definitely more self-love than I'm feeling between the mirror and the cups. More self-love that everything that you desire, it's inside you, especially when you start caring for yourself. The Knight of Pentacles. This is interesting because in this card, this is a bitter lemon. I remember reading the little booklet and because the story stood out for me. <laughs> I was like, it's almost like in this card, the Knight of Pentacles, usually it's like something that comes, an offer that comes with time, okay? Um, this offer can only come if you remove it. We're going back to the decluttering. If you remove certain ways of feeling, thinking, and I would say for some of you, it might even be um, certain situations, relationships, and events um, that you need to remove yourself from. Because there's, pile number two, it's I, I, there's just something so much greater. Okay? And I feel like there's this, this feeling of feeling stuck or stagnant that you could experience. And that's a sign for you to go to higher power, go within, look at what is within that situation and, and, and move this energy. Let the energy move through you. Look at this, the Empress. I mean, you see this? Like, this is, I feel really it's almost like the past, the present, and the future. I really feel like you have such promises. So for you, I, as much as I was guided to have frequencies for pile number one, I am almost like a bit out of sorts. Like I almost feel that some of you, just like the cards, uh, if you've been holding on to, for example, material gifts from exes that it was just you know uh, very chaotic like objects that may be triggering some emotions um maybe it's time to gift it away donate it sell it okay there's there's something about decluttering in the physicality maybe looking at your phone contacts and, and just shifting the energy your pictures Okay, let's see what we have here to shift this, this resistance. It's almost like it's... <laughs> and obviously we know that sometimes a resistance, it, it could have been from an experience that created fear. And I wouldn't be surprised it could have been some type of loss. Okay, we have a lot here. Okay, so go and check out my pharmacy. I have right now anger and irritability. Okay, and in this case for like mirror, I would say that the people that anger you or trigger you, they might have some, there might be some wisdom, not even the people themselves, but the situation. And we also have uh, just release anxiety. Okay, so you can work with this. Then we have the small intestine frequency for allowing joy and passion. Now, what's interesting is that uh, in the zodiac, the small intestine is connected to Virgo. There's a lot of earth here. Um, maybe some of you have some Virgo placement in your chart. 
that would be uh, supportive to listen to this. Yeah. Okay, we have your subconscious mind. That's a great frequency to listen and fall asleep at night to help you understand some of those layers of resistance. You see here with the allowing joy and passion, maybe there's a fear to be almost like taken over by passion and wanting to be more in control. So there's maybe some control issues here. And you have one video that's called awareness of energy balances, imbalances. Um, there's a video tutorial here. This is more about breath work. It works with binaural beats. Uh, but you can just listen to it. It's part of your true abundant nature. I don't know where's my pen. I would write it down. But, oh, there it is. Um, and this one teaches you in video number one, your true, uh, true abundant nature, teaches you about microcosmic uh, orbit breathing. You guys, this is something you've never tried. This can relax you. And I would say for some of you, that might be the first and number one thing that you're being called to do as far as your connection with your higher power. It's just connecting with the flow of energy within you. Okay? All right. That's all I have. That's quite a lot <laughs> for you, pile number one. I'm trusting this is supporting you. If you need... Uh, and you have more questions about the frequencies, please feel free to connect with me via email. This is my work of heart. I really am passionate about helping people attune to uh, their higher self, their embodiment of their sacred self through sound, because there's no amount of words that I can convey that can match the results you can get from sound. Okay, so if you need help, you can see the details of my email and even book with me. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. Namaste. Pile number three. Let's see what you have and what you need to hear of right now from the Akashic Records. So we have the two of keys with the treasure. Now, this scene really depicts someone that seems to have lost something or been robbed of something. You can see the expression, but there is this powerful light, powerful light here in the background, which really feels that there might have been something that had to be removed, okay? And a certain maybe experience, some of you, because it's connected with the Akash, maybe if you've experienced a lot of loss, whether material, or just people, you know, like whatever expression of loss. Um, but it's as if it was part of teaching you how to find the true worth and the true treasure, which is your connection to source, which is the light within, which is always there. And the more you focus on that connection, the more your path lights up. Versus when you focus on the outside 3D expression of maybe what has been and what has been lost, then everything starts to crumble and feel more like, I'm hearing it, so I'm going to say it, doomsday. <laughs> some of you, uh, maybe some of you have a little bit of Leo in your chart. It, can, it sounds a little bit dramatic here. <laughs> um, let's see what we have. Else opportunities and important offer will be made be prepared and dressed to impress wow okay so you see here there's a message from the Akash as far as your current experience and maybe some of the loss and how it was always meaningful and purposeful to offer you this opportunity to tap into something that is priceless, your connection to source, your connection to everything. It's, I'm hearing the word vortex, connecting to the vortex of your own creation and your own potential. Look at this, <laughs> the warrior with Hercules energy. Now, I'm hearing, oh, is it the term in, in English? I'm sorry, the 12... Oh, les douze travaux d'Hercule. 
oh, I, the 12 works of Hercules. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry if that's not the right term in English, but the tales about what um, type of work, you know, and, 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 and trials, this is the word, trials that Hercules had to go through and that showed so much strength. Okay, I feel this is this is a message um, that emphasizes how at your core you have this warrior energy. By the way, I want to mention it because I am an astrologer. So when I see in the cards anything that relates to the chart, some of you may have um, five to ten degrees Scorpio. I'm feeling also. 20 to 25 degrees Pisces, okay? There's certain elements in the charts or position of planets in the zodiac that speaks more of having to transcend a lot of the inner wars, the conflicts. So here I'm feeling this energy for you. It says um, with this energy that this the bearer of this type of hand uh, you know, with a praised pad of flesh here, um, could be possessing some characteristic of a fighter or a crusader. Oh, wow. Okay. Fights for personal beliefs, political, social involvement, physically, mentally self-discipline may practice martial arts. Okay. So definitely <laughs> here there's 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 a past life there's a past about you having experienced a lot of trials and maybe in this life you've noticed it as well but let's see what the message the akash wants you to harness as a potential okay so we have wow i mean we can emphasize this, you know, more than that. Chaos and conflicts. Truth be told. Let's change up. Then you have two cards here. I live each moment with a presence of gratitude. Wow, look at this light. So much light. My emotions move through cycles and connect me to my truth. Wow, I'm. This energy is so intense, yet so beautiful. Okay. Pile number three. You have. You were born with the spirit of a warrior, of someone that was going to stand for what they believe is true. Maybe in past lives, you know, um, there was maybe too much of like hyper focus on a goal, or whatever, but it also led you to have uh, develop a certain discipline, a certain self mastery that in this life is meant to be reactivated. It's almost like no matter how many trials um, you get back up. You know, it, it reminds me to tell, um, to tell Bruce Lee's energy with his quote was saying that, you know, he would fear more someone that has practiced one kick a thousand times than someone that knows a thousand kicks, you know, and it's almost like there is this, this knowing that you, with Hercules, you have gone through many wars, inner, outer, past lives, this life, and they don't need to be actual, you know, wars, you know, that we witness still, unfortunately, on earth. Um, but it could be just also the war between the heart and the mind, okay? And this is where I'm feeling your you watching this now, because this is a timeless reading, and whatever you're watching this is a perfect alignment for you to receive this energy. There's something that has been shifted and is being shifted, that is being born. And you see this, like this energy of the moon in the birthing, you know, belly, so canal. And I feel that there's a sense of heart-brain coherence. 
you know, creating more from less of the ego and based on what is right or true, but more what is in alignment with you. Because I feel like maybe the residual of having to fight just even for surviving or for being heard. I think some of you maybe, um, I don't know why I'm saying this, but as a child, you were not being uh, acknowledged. So you maybe had to throw tantrums just to be heard. Or some of you, you decided to go another way. Or maybe you just retrieved more, became more silent. Um, you know, but there's, there's here this request from the divine and a message that you need to hear right now is that this type of chaos, this type of activation was actually meant to activate a connection to source that is so precious. And I know why, because I can feel it as I'm like saying all this is that we're here on earth with a very obvious duality to transcend and that's part of why we're experiencing this 3d materialization um and it's almost like you were very much living in the contrast so some of you maybe you have scorpio placement because i feel it with the old black or white <laughs> but part of the teaching of scorpio is to actually be in between because it's it's very much about being a messenger between life and death and being different times of life between you know those this process of being reborn so i'm feeling you're watching this because a part of you is being reborn a part of you that is more um able to allow your intuitive self your vulnerable self to shine through okay and you're losing some and I feel like some of you, maybe you have to watch not like being attached to your ego, um, just like a warrior would be attached to just having to conquer and battle. Um, it's, it's almost like it, it's okay now to have a higher vision, especially that this zebra that was black or white is turning into more of the coloring of a giraffe, which suggests a higher vision and this is why I feel some of you you may also have um, Leo placements uh, I feel it uh, from becoming more of a seer some of you it's almost like I don't know why but I'm feeling this some of you if you haven't watched The Last Kingdom on Netflix there was a scene that I remember so well and I can remember the hero just at this level where there was no more battle and just you know like watching the river and the current of the you know ships and just feeling from the subtle shift in the air if there was danger coming you know it's just there's like this almost like this ability for you that you're developing that has been many many cycles okay it's almost like Maybe you had to also harness how it feels, you know, to feel those things coming and what to do and how to react and not to lose control, not to lose your mind, not to hyper focus on what is. It's almost like, yes, we have to accept what is so we can move into a place of what can be in alignment with higher truth, higher faith but not from a place of ego. It's very, it's almost like I honestly, pile number three, you, <laughs> sorry. I just feel like you're like very, almost like a Jedi. Um, because I felt like Yo Yoda. I'm like, maybe you're just being trained to become Yoda-like. Um, Maybe some of you, you've experienced some of the galactic wars and uh, some of you that will not speak to you. Um, and that's usually when you have remembrance of the galactic wars. It's when your soul has experienced uh, choosing um, service to self. Okay, if some of you know about the law of one and raw consciousness. This is how I know what I'm, I'm sharing. Um, 
the Galactic Wars would be you experiencing uh, service to self timelines and seeing how that would play out. Okay, all right, so <laughs> I am loving how those readings sometimes can feel quite mystical. Like my dear friend would say, it's like not vanilla. It's like for sure, not for everyone. Okay, so this, this deck is more about your kundalini energy and how energy flows and moves through you. That's too much. Well, maybe not. Okay. We have an empress. You, you have double energy of empress here. My dear pile number three, with the Akashic record and this memory and this understanding of your soul, at a soul level, you are a warrior. Okay, there's different, you know, all those piles had like very intense energy messages. Um, but ultimately, I was show, see, seeing and being revealed like the potential, the potential of the Akash, the potential of you knowing certain things that you've experienced and uh, and and really honoring it, acknowledging it, and, and allowing then this new phase to come forward for you. So let's see what we have. We have the Four of Cups. Mm. I would say for you, pile number three, I wouldn't be surprised that you would have maybe also a Venus retrograde in your chart. That doesn't have to be, but... Uh, or Mercury retrograde. Um, there's something about secrecy, about maybe uh, lethal attraction. Again, um, maybe being attracted to danger. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why. I'm laughing. <laughs> maybe some of you that could be a mechanism to break the tension. Laughter. Okay. Um, that could be also trying not to take seriously yourself too seriously. Um that allows you to maybe hide some past trauma. Okay, I have to mention it because we have a lot of mother. Um, you could have some first house placement that would suggest inherited uh, womb um, energy. That's something if you do not know in your astrology chart, each house has a correlation to a year in your life. And the first house is the year of the womb. So uh, I feel that there could be some of you, some influence like that. Uh, last but not least, what do we have? The lovers. Choice. This is a card of choice. Um, and I feel that it's almost like you're being called to be stepping into a place in your life where you choose love where you choose peace where you choose to become the master of your own emotions and your mind okay so you can align with a timeline that is going to make you shine from within okay instead of having all those battles or those things that are maybe connected more to the outside for you pile number three i feel like this whole life and past lifetimes, but here you're listening to this message saying like all that you have and needed and you were seeking has been always with you and within you. Um, but to an extent that is really strong, some of you, maybe you even have Capricorn energy or um, because of the mind focus that I feel like some of you, maybe you can really have super focus um, and really achieve almost like things that people don't think is possible. I can feel like a very tremendous amount of drive, but it's, it's calling you at this time to put this drive into becoming this, this master you know, inside of yourself, like very, like, yeah, just like with the, with the martial art, like almost like a, yeah, you're, you're becoming a master of your own emotions and your mind. And it's going to allow you to create something that is more of your own design, your own accord, instead of like living 
life according to whatever is being thrown at you, which you seem to be really good at. Now, this is the message that you needed to hear from the Akash, that you're stepping into a timeline or a place where you're going to live more by design instead of being also controlled by the exterior. So that's what I feel for you. Now, in terms of frequency, I'm not seeing as much as pile number one was very clear to me. Pile number two wasn't either as far as the frequency. So let's see, because there's a lot of us watching this, so it could be different frequencies. But let's see for my warriors, <laughs> pile number three. My my Yodis, Yodas, <laughs> I feel three cards here. Let's see what we have for you. Okay, that's a membership. Okay, and okay, perfect. So we got the spleen. I love it. Spleen frequency allowing faith and success. Okay, so I think that some of you, um, the spleen can be connected to feeling blue, feeling depressed, but also very much like if you're a warrior. Maybe some of you, not a warrior, a warrior. <laughs> Maybe some of you became a warrior because of all your wars, um, past lives or this life. Um, so that can help you. That can really, really help you. I actually remember how when I engineered the anxiety in my pharmacy, I have a vibration of pharmacy. I was testing some you know, frequencies, the right frequencies for anxiety. And until I added the spleen, like the, the, like it was not working. Like the spleen just kind of like took the anxiety and just like almost dropped. It was like, wow, that was so, so interesting. So definitely here. Now we have psychic healing of energy imbalances. That's part of, where do I put my pen every time? <laughs> My true abundant nature. By the way, you guys, I'm going to start listing in the description box um, all my playlist. So it's easier for you to find it. Okay. So my true abundant nature. And this is the video number two, psychic healing of energy imbalances that uses breath of fire. <laughs> Great. So maybe some of you working with the spleen, working with this is going to help. And the ones that have, and I'm not surprised because of all the influence of the imprints. So some of you, the mother, the womb and heart recalibration, this is part of the YouTube membership. Uh, by the way, if you enjoy the support of my frequencies, that really supports me when you join and you will have access to more astrology readings, by the way when you join for the music, you have like double bonus. So womb heart recalibration, um, that helps creating from the heart and not from the mind, not from the ego, not from a place of worry or feeling unsafe. I love this for you. Pile number three. That's all I have. If it supported you, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions for the frequency on how to use them, or whatever, this is my work of heart. So I am so pleased when I get questions and recommend, you know, how to use them. I am honored to respond. Um, if you need to book with me, you have all details there. Thank you so very much. Namaste.